This week, I want to talk about the APOE gene and its relationship to Alzheimer's disease, melanoma, and now breaking research shows COVID-19 severity risk. And if you have a family member with dementia, specifically Alzheimer's dementia, you may be aware of this gene uh, because that's what it gets the most press about is its relationship to Alzheimer's disease risk. And it's also got uh, historical data relating it to melanoma risk as well. And then now this month, September, just, just in the last few days, September 2022, a study has come out showing in mice at least that uh, the APOE gene, your, your allele, if you have variants to the APOE gene, increases risk of COVID severity. So these researchers were looking you know, to understand further why some individuals have no symptoms or just the sniffles and some individuals die. And so we know by now you're probably aware of the many contributing factors that create a constellation of a specific case. Um, but these researchers stumbled upon the APOE gene as also being a factor. And what's interesting is historically the APO gene, APOE gene hasn't been looked at in terms of infectious risk, like I said, it's 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 got known roles in Alzheimer's and melanoma, but no one looked at it in regards to infection, but it turns out it plays a role. This is published in the journal Nature, and again, it's so new that it's actually not been finished uh, editing, but they, they you can see they released this accelerated article preview. And the title is Common Human Genetic Variants of APOE Impact Murine COVID-19 Mortality. Murine is mouse. So this was a mouse study, and the researchers wanted to see how this gene impacts mouse survival in COVID. But once they got the results with that, they then went back and did a retrospective analysis of human uh, COVID data to, to you know, quasi-confirm their thinking and to support the call for prospective studies to consider the APOE variant as a role player in COVID severity and, and future just infectious disease severity. So we know that the APOE gene is associated with Alzheimer's disease. And the, the way that if you've ever run a 23andMe test, you know, you can go back and look at your APOE gene and see are you the typical one which is the APOE3 okay 40% of the population are APOE3 and that's the considered the most protective one from from an Alzheimer's disease risk if you have APOE2 okay or APOE4 those are the higher risk variants for Alzheimer's with the APOE4 being the highest risk especially if you have a double four, okay? So you could have an E3, E4, an E3, E2, an E2, E4, an E4, E4. You know, there's, there's, there's two sides to it, right? So the people with the double E4 have the highest risk of Alzheimer's disease. And so, you know, those people need to be more, I guess, theoretically, you know, they need to be, more conscious of what they're doing, how they're living, so they don't promote and accelerate their neurodegeneration. Uh, we know the people on this call, on this YouTube channel, on this podcast, however you're uh, digesting this content, if you've been around for a while, you realize that these gene variants are just a susceptibility. They're not a damnation to a given outcome. So having a double E4 doesn't damn you to Alzheimer's. Okay, it's an increased susceptibility to it or an increased risk of developing it, but there are people with APOE4 who will never develop Alzheimer's. Okay, so it's a susceptibility or a risk, but your choices, your environment, your lifestyle, the epigenetics determine whether it's ever expressed and manifests as neurodegeneration and Alzheimer's disease. So we know that that gets the most press. Then the APOE gene is related to. Uh, melanoma as well. And the way that its role in melanoma is it, dry, it, it a healthy 
the proper ApoE gene promotes immune surveillance and recognition of melanoma and clearance of it. If you've got the variants, there's an increased risk of melanoma. And then most recently here, this cutting edge or this uh, brand new study from this week is showing that it also plays a role in COVID. So if we read through the beginnings here, the authors, you know, again, say the same things that all these studies say in the first sentence or two is um, the clinical outcomes of COVID or SARS-CoV-2 are highly mixed, ranging from asymptomatic to lethal. And the factors un underlying this mixture of outcomes remain insufficiently understood. There have been genetic association studies suggesting various genetic variants that play a role in the mixed outcomes of COVID-19. And so these authors want to look at the APOE gene. The APO stands for apolipoprotein E. And the, the, the um, science says that 3% of the world has a homozygous variant. So homozygous means you have two matching copies, okay? Or in the case of the variants, two bad copies. So you have either two E2s or two E4s. That would make you homozygous. If you're heterozygous, that means you have one good, one bad. So it'd be like E2, E3 or E3, E4, okay? But 3% of the world's population have homozygous, either E2, E2 or E4, E4, which increases the risk of Alzheimer's, atherosclerosis, and um, suboptimal anti-tumor immunity. And so now they're looking at the impact on COVID in mice. And what they found was that if you have a homozygous mice bearing homozygous E2 or E4 variant exhibited rapid disease progression and poor survival outcomes uh, compared to mice bearing the most common homozygous ApoE3 allele. So E2 and E4 mice exhibited increased viral loads as well as a suppressed immune response early in infection. Okay, so if, if they had E2 or E4, that was associated with increased, more rapid development of infection and worse outcomes. Then when they took those findings and retrospectively looked at outcomes in adults in the UK, they found that the APOE genotype was associated with survival in infected patients, meaning if the patients had the normal or most common uh, APOE3, E3 allele, they had the least severe outcomes and the best survival rates. If you had E2 or E4 homozygous, they had the worst survival rates and they were associated with increased risk of death there. Of note, the, if the heterozygous, so if they were E2, E3 or E3, E4, those people were not at increased risk of death or severity. So it's only, at least in this study so far, the homozygous E2s or E4s that, had the, that were associated with increased risk. So what does this mean for us? Well, if you've, it, with the data we've got right now, you know, it, it's another possible contributing factor to severe outcome, okay? Uh, in and of itself, it's unlikely if you're doing everything else right, but you have E4, E4, it's unlikely that you would have a severe outcome. Uh, you know, considering if your lifestyle's on point and you're, you're including your nutrition and sleep and physical activity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but this is a contributing factor, potentially. And so, um, you know, if, it, if you have a 23andMe or an Ancestry.com or, or some sort of genetic test that you've done, those should have your APOE alleles in them, and you can look that up and know what you are, okay? And that can help you understand potential severity risk in infectious disease. It can help you understand melanoma risk. It can help you understand Alzheimer's risk. And so it can be a, a, a piece to help motivate you towards making the right decisions and choices to prevent development of Alzheimer's or melanoma and optimize your, your you know, your outcomes in viral infections. 
So this is important. It's a first step. It's retrospective, means look, meaning looking back at human outcomes. Uh, the next step would be doing prospective research, which means looking ahead, right? So um, testing people to know their AVOE genotypes and then um, observing when exposed to say future infections, how do they do? And can we take action to um, optimize outcomes? Okay. And so our approach would be optimized lifestyle. Uh, the researchers approach of course is always to default to, well, get that maybe we could prioritize APO2s and APO4s for vaccines because they're at increased risk. So maybe we give them the vaccines first. That's kind of the way the research looks at it because it's a, a pharma focused and pharma funded uh, industry. So hope this helps you um, understand not, not just, it's not so much about COVID risk as it is in our context, as it is understanding your genes and your variants and understanding having the gene doesn't damn you, but it could be another possible contributing factor to risk for these various diseases.